All right, guys, let's go ahead and finish chapter 37 and get into chapter 38. I tell you I will not help, the dragon said again. Jack stared at her suspiciously. She had to know he could order her. Why give them the idea in the first place? Mela Fluid, you will transport us all to the palace of the Snow Queen, he said. He paused and then added, including yourself. That did it. There's no reason for me to go, Malevolent said furiously, sounding as if she wanted to scream, but still bound by Jack's earlier command. The spell doesn't allow me to go along. Are you lying? Jack asked quietly. Yes, Malevolent hissed, and her whole body shook so hard, Jack almost tumbled off. I will transport us all, little human, but I swear on my last breath I shall hunt you all of you down, and your mothers shall cry when they hear tales of what I've done. Right, right, mother's crying, whatever, May said, pulling herself up behind Jack, then turning around to help pull Philip up. After they'd secured the prince, May reached down to help up the wolf, but the animal, still in human form, hesitated, a growl rumbling in the back of his throat. Suddenly, Jack remembered the wolf's earlier words. You said she'd betrayed your mistress, Jack said to the wolf. She betrayed Snow White somehow, didn't she? The animal just stared at him, not responding. That explains how she knows where the palace of the Snow Queen is, Jack continued. She's been there before. Is that true, Melifluent? Yes, the dragon hissed. I have been to the palace, and I will take you, but only if you release me after I do so. So you can hunt us down and make our mothers cry, May said, as the wolf slowly climbed up behind Philip. Not likely. You'll be lucky if you make it out of this alive. Oh, I will live, the dragon said. Believe me, and we will meet again much sooner than you think. Right, May said. Whatever you say there, Puff. We're all ready to go, so let's get a move on. And then she kicked her heels into the dragon twice. Giddy up. The dragon hissed again, but didn't move. What's the hold up, Melable? May said with another kick. I'm serious. Let's go. I cannot move, May malevolent growled furiously until the young human. Oh, Jack said, sorry. May smacked him on the back of his head, but he let it go. Okay, Melifluent, you can move, but only enough to get us to the palace of the Snow Queen. Got it? The Jack, then Jack kicked the dragon too, just for the heck of it. He figured that might not be the smartest idea, but frankly, it was just too tempting to resist. The dragon hissed in rage, but began chanting quietly. The entire room started to shimmer in time to malevolent harmony, a rainbow of colors melting in and out of their vision. Jack shuddered with excitement. They were finally going to rescue May's grandmother. Except, it occurred to him that they'd been so focused on finding May's grandmother, they neglected to think about who they'd have to face to rescue her the Wicked Queen. Now Jack shivered for a different reason. Jack, May, Philip, and the Wolf King, the four of them were going to personally face down the Wicked Queen. They were going to fight the woman whose armies had conquered half the world, the woman who had ruled over the entire world if not for Snow White. This was the woman who, whose dark spirits and demons terrified people everywhere at just their mention, the woman who con controlled armies of dragons purely by strength of her own magic. This was the woman whom the greatest heroes in the world had failed to defeat. This was the woman who waited for them in the palace of the Snow Queen. As the blackened walls of the room melted into blinding white cloud of snow and cold, Jack had just enough time to wonder if any of them would make it out alive before everything went dark. Chapter 38 Jack woke up face down in a snowdrift, and for a second, before the cold cut through his shock, he wondered exactly how many times he was going to be knocked out during this quest. Then the shock wore off, and his attention shifted immediately to the fact that he couldn't feel most of his body, and that he'd never been so cold in his entire life. All around him the wind swirled and eddied, spinning snow into whirlwinds of wintering black blackness. As a result, Jack couldn't see more than a foot or two in front of him. Beyond that, it was as if someone had dropped a curtain of pure white. More important, though, Jack also quickly discovered that besides being blind, he also couldn't move. He glanced down and quickly realized why. He was sunk up to his chest in snow. Hello, he screamed out to nothing at all around him, but got no reply. He tried to kick his feet, but neither of his legs would move. After a bit of shifting, he was able to pull his arms out of the snow, then free his lower body through a combination of pushing with his arms and creating toe holes with his feet. Soon he found himself lying on top of the snow instead of beneath it, completely exhausted by the effort to free himself. Hello, he screamed again, trying to be heard over the biting wind, but again received no response. Where was May and Philip and the Wolf King? If nothing else, he should have seen the dragon, and enormous, as enormous as malevolent was. How he ended up separated. Jack dropped his stinging hands back onto the snow, then pushed himself to his feet at least. 
as well he could in the he as well as he could in the snowdrift. Once he was sure of his balance, he stumbled forward, exposing hands buried in his underarms to try to regain some feeling. His face was so exposed, but there wasn't much he could do all about that. Beside the rest of his body wasn't exactly a whole lot warmer. Hello, he screamed a third time, but still heard nothing. Then a thought occurred to him. Mellifluent, he yelled out again at the top of his lungs. If you can hear me, get over here. If she heard him was still under the control of the reins. Just like that, the ground shook as a monstrous shape plowed through the snow toward him. The shape was just a few feet from him before he could fully make out that it was malevolent. Not the dragon that seemed to be stopping. Instead, she rushed toward him at full speed, snow flying widely around her. A vi vicious smile on her face. Stop, he screamed at her. That's close enough. The dragon swore multiple languages, but did come skidding to a stop. The snow piling in front of her as she did, knocking Jack right off his feet. Where is everyone? He asked her as he worked through the tedious process of getting back on his feet. The dragon snarled, then growled. They are all foundering, just as you are. We'll rescue them, then. The dragon stared at him, then dropped her head and began to chant her, magical, her musical magic. Just like that, Jack could hear the ever-present howling of the wind as its head stopped. The reason why became readily apparent. Surrounding them in every direction was a dome of green light cackling with lightning. The dome seemed solid, yet Jack could see through it to the wind swirling on the other side. The dome wasn't just keeping out the wind. Jack felt heat emanating off it. Thank you, he said to the dragon who just glared at him with murder in her eyes. He decided to ignore that for now and started searching the area for the others instead. As it turned out, none of them had been too far away. The wolf had landed closest to Jack, just over the hill of the snow from where Jack had woken up. The wolf king was awake and had even managed to dig himself most of the way out, so Jack helped finish the job as fast as he could. Next, Jack and the wolf found May, who had somehow managed to avoid being buried in the snow, landing on, her, landing on the sheltered side of the snowdrift. It looked like May's fairy had been thrown from her perch when they'd arrived, but had snuggled back up into the princess's hair to try to stay warm. Jack quickly woke May, and she seemed to be fine, if freezing. They found Philip, or more accurately, his shoes, at the top of another enormous pile of snow. After some digging, Philip emerged in one piece, at least relatively, considering he was still wounded from malevolence torture. May and Philip were completely numb, but the heat of the green dome quickly helped melting the snow from their clothes and warming them up. We definitely found the snow part of the palace, Jack said, when they'd all regained feeling in their extremities. So where is it, May said, glancing around. Mellifluent, show us the palace of the Snow Queen, Jack, or Jack ordered the dragon, who for once complied without arguing. She chanted a few more words, and the green dome opened on one side to allow the tunnel to stretch forth. As they watched, the green light tunnel extended farther and farther, finally stopping at what looked like to be twin tornadoes of swirling wind and snow. That is the entrance of the palace of the Snow Queen, Malevolent said. The walls are made of snow, the windows and doors formed by the wind. I have transported you here, now I demand that you release me. Nah, Jack said absently, staring with the rest of them at the doors of the palace. How could someone open a door made of wind? Philip stood up and brushed the remaining snow from his pants. Well, my friends, he said, it appears that we have reached the end of our journey. With a few more steps, we will finally rescue Snow White, the beloved grandmother of Princess May. He smiled. I am actually surprised we made it. Jack almost laughed. Me too, honestly, he agreed. Not that we're done or anything, but wow. Even May grinned. I can't believe we're finally here, she said, a strange look on her face. Jack pulled a hand on her shoulder. Ready to rescue Snow White, princess, he asked, and now he couldn't help smiling too. She stuck out her tongue. You've got no idea. Jack nodded, finding himself much more excited than he would have expected. This must be how it feels to complete an adventure. No wonder so many tried it. It was intoxicating. Can you, ima can you make it? Jack asked Philip, who limped over to stay next to the princess. The prince winced a bit, and even that seemed to be painful for him. I am hurt, I admit, but I would not miss this. Jack stopped for a moment, then slapped himself in the head. Mellifluent, he said, heal Philip. The dragon let loose a stream of obscenities, this one small act seeming the last thing she'd ever be willing to do. Finally, though, the magic of the reins overpowered her will, and she chanted the spell under her breath. Before their eyes, the bruises and cuts faded from Philip's body, and he stood up straighter, a smile coming over his face as he did. Even his clothes had been repaired. Those reins really are quite useful, the prince said happily. Jack nodded, looking from Philip to May, and suddenly he felt the need to say something profound. You know, this might be the last time we three are together without things going crazy, so I just wanted to say. 
You can have a good cry later, girls, May interrupted. Time to go. With that, she broke into a run for the green light tunnel, leaving Jack staring after her with an open mouth. Philip looked at him, shrugged, then sprinted after her. Jack grinned and shook his head, then ran to catch up to the other two. As Jack reached the Green Dome's tunnel, he could just make out the outline of the palace on the other side, an enormous castle that didn't look built so much as sculpted from snow, carved into place by whatever forces had designed it. Spirals of ice erupted from the snow's walls on either side of the wind doors, gleaming with terrible beauty in the light of the Green Dome. The walls themselves loomed higher than Jack could see, carved to resemble stone. Besides the white color, the only thing giving away the fake stone was the fact that the snow was so dense and smooth it actually glowed. This place is incredible, Jack said, almost breathless from the sight. How do we get in then, May said, staring at the two tornadoes in front of them. Before Jack could even open his mouth to respond, the tornadoes began to slowly pull away from each other, separating enough to open the way into the palace. And there, between the door two doors of wind, stood someone dressed in all green. The huntsman grinned widely. Well then, he, he said, I hope you didn't have too much trouble finding the place. And that is the end of chapter 38. So we'll have to see what happens in the last couple chapters. Bye for now.